Now let's look at the tangent function. We covered tangent in video TR-19. If we're asked for the angle whose tangent is 2, there would be an infinite number. So, just like we did for sine and cosine, we must limit the range of the inverse function so that it passes the vertical line test. This iteration of the curve has been selected to represent the arctangent function. The domain of the function is any ratio between negative infinity and positive infinity. This means the arctangent function will tell us the angle whose tangent is any number. The range of the function, that is, the set of angles we can get back as an answer, is between, but not including, negative pi over 2 radians to pi over 2 radians. By similar means, here's the inverse cotangent function graph. Its domain is also any number, and it returns angles in the range theta between, but not including, 0 and pi radians. Let me show you a common use for arctangent. Suppose we have a point on a coordinate system at x, y. We want to know the standard position angle theta of a point from the origin through this point. Theta is arctangent y over x. Can you see why? Tangent is opposite over adjacent, which is y over x. So we want the angle whose tangent is y over x. Arctan y over x. Here's the graph of secant theta. When I need to sketch the secant graph, I start with the cosine graph, and remember they touch at the peaks because secant is 1 over cosine. You can use the same trick with cosecant and sine. It looks a little disconnected, but this part of the secant graph is used to define the range of arc secant, which looks like this. The domain of the arc secant function is all numbers except those between negative 1 and 1 and the range is angles from 0 to pi radians, except pi over 2 radians. The arc secant can never be pi over 2 radians because the cosine at pi over 2 is 0, and secant is 1 over cosine. Here's the arc cosecant function. Its domain is also all numbers except those between negative 1 and 1, and the range is angles from negative pi over 2 radians to pi over 2 radians except angle 0. The arc cosecant function can never be zero radians because the sine at zero radians is zero, and cosecant is one over sine. With the exception of arc tangent, which is used a lot to calculate the angle between coordinates, the other inverse trig functions in this video are seldom used in real life, but you should at least recognize them and be familiar with them. There's no TR-24X video with extra problems. But to show mastery of the topic so far, you should be able to sketch out accurate graphs of the six trig functions and their inverses, stating the domain and range of each. You don't need to memorize anything. Just be able to see the unit circle in your head and plot out the curves. This may take more than a half hour the first time, but it will build confidence. In the next video, TR-25, we'll go over using a calculator to evaluate inverse trig functions.